Today, I will be talking about the first tutorial of the VARS2 package. This tutorial will cover the VARS and GVARS functionalities. The VARS method is used for uncorrelated and uniformly distributed inputs, and GVARS is used for uncorrelated and non-uniformly distributed inputs. I will be covering four exercises that use the Ishigami test function. For the first experiment, we will run sensitivity analysis on Ishigami via VARS when the inputs are uncorrelated and uniformly distributed. This is the classic sensitivity analysis setting in the literature. This experiment is a benchmark for the rest of the exercise. For experiment two, we will use GVARS and keep the inputs uncorrelated and uniformly distributed. This experiment is essentially the same as the previous experiment, but with a more generalized method, with the objective of testing if GVARS can reproduce VARS results. Experiment three will run GVARS when the inputs uncorrelated are correlated, but still uniformly distributed. The objective of this experiment is to assess the role of correlation between inputs on the sensitivity analysis results. Experiment 4 will finally run the previous experiment, but now with correlated and non-uniformly distributed inputs. The objective of this module, module is to see what happens when the inputs follow other distributions such as normal or triangu triangular. So first what we need to do is run the first cell, which will import the libraries including VARS, GVARS, and the model class, which is used to wrap our sensitivity models. So to run a cell, you press shift enter and something like this should happen. Now we will, we will introduce the Ishigami function for sensitivity analysis. The Ishigami function is just a simple example with three inputs and is one of the most commonly used functions in sensitivity analysis literature to test and compare the performance of different sensitivity analysis methods. So I will run this cell to define the function Next, we will wrap the model in our model class, which just allows us to use it inside of the VARS program. Now we can test it with having all of our inputs just a zero and it should output a zero. As you can see here, we did get a zero, so the program is running as expected. Now to set up our sensitivity analysis experiments, we must talk about the attributes of the VARS program. So first is the parameters. This is just the name of every parameter along with its upper and lower bounds. I will show you how you can declare this parameter later on. Next is the number of stars, the total number of star centers for the VARS analysis. This is just used to increase the sample size. Delta H is the sampling resolution of the star bar sampling to generate star points. Generally, you would want this to be around 0.1. Next is the IVARS scales. The scales of interest for the IVARS estimations is what this parameter covers. Uh, it is recommended to use between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5, as a scale larger than 0 0.5 is meaningless. Next, we have the star centers. These are user-generated star centers, and this is only to be used when a sampler is not chosen. Next, we have the sampler. This is used to determine the sampling strategy for generation of star centers. We have RND, which is random sampling, LHS, which is Latin hypercube sampling, PLHS, which is progressive Latin hypercube sampling, as well as Sobel sequence sampling and Halton sequence sampling. Next, we have the slice size, which is only used for PLHS sampling methods. We then have the seed, which is the number that is used for randomization of the sampling strategy specified by the sampler. This is only needed if a sampler is chosen. We then have the model. This is just the wrapper of the model that we declared earlier using the model class. Next, we have the bootstrap flag. This is a true slash false value to turn on or off bootstrapping for VARS results. We then have the bootstrap size, which is the number of sampling iterations with replacement via bootstrapping. This can generally be around 100 to 1,000. We then have the bootstrap confidence interval. This is just the level of confidence that is going to be used in the bootstrap reporting. We then have a grouping flag, which is a true and false value to turn on or off grouping of VARS results. We then have number of groups, 
which is just the number of groups that you want to split your model parameters into. And if it's less blank, the optimal number of groups will be calculated by FARS. Report verbose is a true or false value that, if true, will display a loading bar to show the progression of the VARS analysis. If it is not, there will be no loading bar. GVARS inherits the attributes of VARS, explained earlier, but it modifies the parameters and adds three new attributes, correlation matrix, fictive matrix flag, and number of directional samples. These will be explained in the following. Parameters in GVARS includes the same of every model parameter, the distribution it follows, and the parameters specifying that distribution. The distribution is currently available and the parameters are listed in the table below. For the uniform distribution type, the parameter 1 will be the lower bound, parameter 2 will be the upper bound, and there will be no parameter 3, so this can be set to none. The distribution identifier is unif, so this must be typed out when you are declaring your parameters. Next we have triangle, which uses its lower bound, upper bound, and the mode of the triangular distribution. This distribution identifier is the word triangle. Next we have the distribution type normal. The first parameter is the mean, the second parameter is the standard deviation, and there is no third parameter, so none can be used. The identifier for this is norm. Next is log normal. The first parameter for this is the mean, the second parameter is standard deviation, and there again is no third parameter distribution. This identifier is log norm. For exponential, we have mean for parameter 1, standard deviation for parameter 2, and again none for parameter 3. The identifier for this is expo. Now of these, there are also the generalized extreme value distribution, Parameter 1 is used for the location, parameter 2 is used for the scale, parameter 3 is used for the shape, and the identifier is GEV. Lastly, we have the custom slash freeform distribution. For this, all of the parameters are none, and the identifier is custom. The correlation matrix is the correlation matrix, which includes the Pearson correlation between every pair of parameters and must be defined as a NumPy array. Fictive mat flag is true or false is a true or false value to turn on or off the estimation process of the fictive matrix. This flag essentially needs to be on, but if the estimation becomes cumbersome in high dimensional problems, you can turn it off. In that case, GVARS assumes that the fictive matrix is identical to the original correlation matrix. This assumption may be generally acceptable in complex and high dimensional problems, but it is not recommended to use it otherwise. The number of directional samples is the number of samples GVARS takes along each direction for every star center. Here are some good to know pieces for advanced users. I'll leave this for you to read. And now we will define some of the experiments. So to define an experiment, we create our parameters variable, which is a dictionary with the name of your parameter and the key is the lower bound and upper bound for VARs. For GVARs, it'd be shown below here with whatever the distribution parameters are to be specified, including the identifier for the distribution. Now, to set up the experiments, we call whatever program we are trying to run. Here, it is VARs. And then we use all of its parameters and fill them in with what we are desired. And then we can just press Shift Enter to define each experiment. It should also be mentioned for GVARs. You may also want to make your correlation matrix separately, as shown here. This is just to keep uh, the code looking more clean. Now, for the rest of the experiments, we are going to be using 100 stars. This is generally a good amount for this test function, as it is a simple model and should give us the results we are looking for. Now I'm going to run each of the experiments and get back to you when they're done. Okay, now that the experiments have finished running, you can see here the loading bars for when the program is running, and when it is finished, they will be all completely green. Each loading bar just explains the steps that the program is going through as it's running. So you can see for regular bars, it is a little different than GVARS here, 
as we have to bin and reorder the pairs in GVirus. Now we can take a look at the results. The first result we will look at is the IVARS, which stands for the Integrated Variogram Across a Range of Scales. This is the primary sensitivity indice by the VARS approach. So first, we will just print the scales of range to show you. And as you can see, here are the sensitivity indices for a 0.1 range, 0.3 range, and 0.5 range for the parameters x1, x2, and x3. Here we can see similar for the other experiments, but something more useful we can do is take a look at some plots of these indices. So there's two points that I should bring up before I show these. We will be plotting IWARS 50, which is called the total variogram effect. It is the most comprehensive sensitivity index. And the second point is plotting the sensitivity results in the log scale will help us better differentiate less influential parameters. So for experiment one, we will plot it here. And as you can see, here are the sensitivity indices for IVARS 50. And X3 is definitely the most less influential parameter. Now for experiment two, we see that the plots are as expected as they're almost identical to those of experiment one. The small differences are due to the randomness and sampling and algorithmic differences between VARs and GVARs, but other than that, they are generally the same. Now for experiment three, where we added a little correlation between X1 and X3, we can see that it makes X1 a lot less influential, and even X3 is more influential than X1 now. Now for experiment four, when we add a ununiform distribution, we can see that X1 is now more influential than X3. These shows the differences between correlation and non-correlation and uniform and ununiform distributions. Now, in addition to IVARS indices, VARS and GVARS estimate the Sobel variance-based total order effects as side products. Here, we print them, and now we will take a look at the plots. We get a similar effect to what we have seen with the IVARS indices. Now, in addition to IVARS and Sobel indices, VARS and GVARS also estimate various versions of the Morris derivative-based absolute elementary effect and the mean actual elementary effect. A point to bring up is that in the derivative-based approach, the user needs to choose a delta aka the step size, for numerical estimation of derivatives. It is recommended to go with the smallest delta available here, which is equal to delta h, but the user could choose any integer product of delta h as well. Here we choose 0 0.1, as mentioned. And here we print out some of the vars a results and vars a's result, a's results for each experiment. Now, here are the plots for the experiments. Now, the results are a little different than the previous two approaches as we are using derivative-based amount, which can give you a different insight into the influentialness of each parameter. Here we can see that x1 and x3 are actually much less influential than x2. But with the mean actual elementary effect, x1 seems to be the most influential in that case. Now, these results can be differentiated by remembering which method you are using and taking into account all of the results in the VARS program. For experiment two, we can see similar results again as expected. For experiment three, where we add correlation, the results are similar, but not quite the same. And now for experiment four with undistributed, non-uniform distributed parameters, the results also are a little different as expected. For advanced users, the VARS program also outputs the directional variograms, which provide a wealth of information about the structure of the model response surface. The point to make in this is that variograms are most meaningful when h is between 0 and 0 0.5 of the parameter ranges, but the user can investigate the entire range from 0 to 1. Now here we print out some of the variograms from each experiment, and here are some of the plots. For experiment 1, you can see as perturbation scale increases, x2, orange, 
increases, then decreases, and the other two linearly increase generally. On a log scale, you can see that the decrease in the sensitivity for x2 is much drastic than the changes for x1 and x3. Now, here are the plots for the other experiments. Again, experiment 2 looks generally the same as experiment 1. Experiment 3 looks a little different as there's correlation. And experiment 4 also looks a little different as there is non-uniform distributions. Now, the user of sensitivity analysis may need to assess the uncertainty around any of the results reported above and the robust, their robustness against sampling size and variability. To do so, when setting up the sensitivity analysis experiment above, make sure to turn on the bootstrap flag and choose a bootstrap size and bootstrap confidence interval. Like shown below, here we set it to true, bootstrap size, bootstrap size is set to 1000. It is recommended to be greater than 100, the bigger the number, the more accurate the estimate, but it also will take longer to run. Here we choose a confidence of 0 0.9, which is a likelihood of 90%. The true value is within the intervals generated by the bootstrap. Now, here we can see the upper and lower bounds of I bars, and here we can see a factor importance plot of I bars 50, bars 2, and bars A, along with their confidence intervals from experiment 1. We can also take the factor rankings and their bootstrap generated robustness. Rank 0 indicates the most influential parameter, and rank 1 the second most influential, etc. The higher the robustness value, also called reliability, the better. A perfect robustness for a parameter is 1, meaning that parameter received its respective rank in every instance of bootstrap resampling. As another example, a robustness of 0, 0 0.7 means the respective rank turned out to be the case in 70% of bootstrap resamplings. So as we see here for experiment 1, x2, it goes x2, x1, and x3 for i bar 0 0.1. And for 0 0.5, it goes x1, x2, x3. Here we can see similar results for the robustness rankings. In the case of high dimensional problems, which is models with many inputs, you may want to group parameters together based on their importance characterized by the sensitivity analysis. To do so, when setting up the experiment above, make sure to turn on the grouping flag and choose a number of groups. Also make sure the bootstrap flag is on. Here we do grouping flag equals true and num groups equal two. Any number smaller than the number of parameters works fine. So here x1 and x2 were grouped two together with x3. As if you can remember with the previous plots, we have seen that x1 and x2 were a lot closer and influentialness than x3. Now there is a section to delve deeper with additional information for advanced users, but I will leave that for you guys to read on your own.